May God bless you all. Today we're going to continue our sharing on the Song of Songs by talking about the prefaces and title of the book as commented by William of St. Thierry. He says, Further, the song is written in the manner of a stage play, in the style of a comedy, as if its performance were to be carried out by characters and directions. So that just as there are many, as there are different characters and different actions involved in the performance of comedies, so too in the song the characters and their passions seem to work together for the purpose of bringing the love affair, the mystical transaction of divine and human union to its conclusion. In the song there are four characters, the bridegroom and his companions, the bride and the chorus of young maidens. The companions of the bridegroom are the angels, rejoicing with us over the good things that come to us in this way, taking pleasure in the service they render by their apt ministries. For their part, the young maidens are tender and new-sprung souls who have signed up for instruction in and practice of spiritual life and delight to follow the bride, that is to say, more advanced souls, by their humble obedience and eager imitation. Nevertheless, the entire business of love-making is left to the lovers, and the result is that since the sharers in their love are silent and stand still and hear and are overjoyed at the words of the bridegroom and the bride, in the whole of the song, scarcely a single word is heard, or a single speech inserted that does not come from the bridegroom or the bride. As to the subject matter of the play, be it historical, fictional or symbolic, it involves some such plot as this. As this. King Solomon has taken the daughter of Pharaoh to wife. He has first of all granted her the significant gift proper to a betrothal, of laugh and of a kiss. After that, however, when he has shown her a portion of his riches and a part of his glory, he denies her both conjugal union and the pleasure of a kiss, until she has put away her Egyptian blackness and stripped herself of the customs of a barbarous nation and thus has become worthy to be admitted to the king's chamber. The spiritual sense is this. The soul has turned its face towards God and is to be married to the word of God. First of all, she is taught to comprehend the riches of a prevenient grace and is permitted to taste how sweet the Lord is. Psalm 33 verse 9 and uh, in the Septuagint translation, Psalm 34, verse 8. After that, however, she is sent back into the house of her own conscience. There, she is to be instructed, purified by the obedience of love, and thoroughly cleansed of vices, as well as adorned with virtues, so that she may be admitted to the spiritual gift of devotion to God and to the passion of for virtue which is the bridegroom's chamber. It was necessary to take these matters up by way of preface, so as then, with our part cleared, to chase after the fragrance of the bridegroom, song one tree, but on the prior condition that if at some point the beauty of the root should render us a bit more curious in our role as its viewers, no offense would be given to our companion on the road. But one further observation before we undertake this journey, but one further observation before we undertake this journey. Since all the sections of the song represent nothing other than different states of those who pray, not to mention the forms, the springs and the matter of prayers, it seems that we must say something of the various modes of prayer, so that the serious and devout reader 
as he makes his way through the text of the song itself, may always be returning to himself and finding these modes of prayer in the holy song, may recognize them in his own heart. So then it is plain that there are three states of people who engage in prayer, or for that matter of prayers, animal, rational and spiritual. Every such individual shapes and represents the Lord God for himself in a way that corresponds to his own way of praying. For such as is the one who does the praying, so does the God whom he addresses appear to him. Just as the person who prays faithfully always attempts in the prayer he makes to bring to God something genuine and worthy of God, so do does he maintain an anxious and uncertain heart until he has some picture of the one before whom he places his offering and to whom he entrusts it. Father God, we thank you for today's sharing of the Song of Songs. Help us, Father, to really enter into this union with you. Help us that our prayer is not just reactionary, just uh, sentimental, but also becomes rational and spiritual. Transform our prayer, Father, into animal, rational and spiritual. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And may God Almighty bless you and protect you with his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.